Yo, how's it going guys? I thought I'd make a quick day one raid guide for Vault of Glass that's coming up pretty soon, probably another couple weeks away. Um, so I want to figure out, I'll show you guys what kind of weapons to use and what kind of armor that I think will be good and mods that I think will be good. So I'm going to show you a screenshot of what I found with the elemental damage types that enemies will be doing to you. So I'll pop that up right now. Okay, damage resistance options. As you can see, there's Solar and Void. Solar won't be as threatening because they're miners, whereas the void damage that's going to be happening on day one, they're mages, praetorians, minotaurs, gatekeepers, and then bosses such as Templar and Atheon. It's probably more wise to be wearing a void damage resistance mod on day one. However, instead of rocking a solar damage resistance, I would put on a sniper damage resistance because hobgoblins will probably one-shot you. So overall, I would be running a void damage resistance mod as well as a sniper damage resistance mod. I do not think a Concussive Dampener will be needed, just stay away from the green pools. Now of course there's going to be unknown variables on day one, such as perhaps champions will be added. Given that it's a revamped raid, there's going to be some altercations and changes. I'd imagine there'll probably be unstoppable wyverns or overload minotaurs. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So this is kind of my generalization of what you should be wearing on the day in terms of damage resistance. Obviously there's going to be a lot of void damage especially with the mages and bosses, as well as a lot of sniper damage with the hobgoblins. I would say hobgoblins will be a huge threat on day one because snipers generally can one-shot you under contests. And to touch on Concussive Dampener again, it may be needed against Atheon because from memory, there is a lot of splash damage there. So I guess just switch it as you see fit. Okay, so let's move on to the weapons. What exotic weapons will be good for day one Vault of Glass? I have Wither Horde, in case it's useful for spawn killing and spawn trapping in the later encounters. Izanagi's Burden might be a DPS option that I'm hearing might be useful, and people are actually talking about using it in conjunction with rocket launches with lasting impression, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so Sleeper Simulant, obviously I'm going to bring this in because next season Bungie are talking about a Linear Fusion Rifle buff. So I think Sleeper Simulant might be a really good exotic moving forward. Anarchy is an S tier exotic all around. Obviously the spawn trapping, especially with the later encounters, spawn trapping, spawn killing, the, uh, like planting anarchy shots around the doors, it's just going to be S tier. 1k voices could be a viable DPS option. I'm going to bring it just in case. And of course, Eyes of Tomorrow. I feel like a lot of people are sleeping on this gun right now. Its ad clearing abilities are amazing. It may not be the best DPS choice right now against certain bosses, but in certain scenarios, its tracking and ad clearing abilities are just amazing. I feel like in the first encounter, this is a go-to weapon. Okay, so I know I'm on a Warlock right now, guys, but I'm going to show you what I think you should bring in on a Warlock. Exotic armor. Sun braces. Sun braces will be S tier exotic armor piece to bring in particularly for its ad clearing abilities, throwing grenades constantly throughout the room in the uh, Confluxes and Oracle encounters. The ad clearing abilities will be amazing with this. Definitely put this on. And then you've got your three S tier boots, which is Transversive, Lunar Faction, and Geomags. Lunar Factions might be useful for DPS, helping your teammates reload quicker, or the range buff. Uh, and then you've got Geomags for DPS. It could be a viable DPS option with Chaos Reach. Now for the first time ever, I'm not going to be recommending Phoenix Protocol because I just don't think it's going to be as useful as you think it will be here. Wells, of course, yes, when necessary. But more emphasis on Titan Bubbles, Banner Shields, and DPS behind Relics and Hunter Tethers. But the regeneration speed of Phoenix Protocol, getting your well back, I just don't think will be as crucial here this time. So as a brief summary, I'll show you what I'm taking in for the first encounter. I've got Eyes of Tomorrow for amazing tracking across the terrain to help my teammates capture the plate. Amazing ad clear. Praetorians have Void Shields, so I've got a Void Shotgun ready with Major Spec for that extra damage. Extraordinary Rendition as an amazing connect option. Overflow, Frenzy, Minor Spec. I think these three weapons will be really good for the first encounter. Now for the second encounter, there's going to be more capping of plates, confluxes, a lot of adds roaming the environment. So obviously, as I mentioned before, anarchy for trapping doors, 
spawn killing, spawn trapping, uh, war mine cells with a keyless SMG, global reach, uh, heritage for the mages. However, in the later encounters, when oracles come around, switch to a sniper, you can snipe the oracles from afar. Some braces for spamming grenades all over the place to kill adds. Alright, let's talk about DPS options for the bosses. What are people talking about? The high level community is talking about hot swapping Izanagi's burden with lasting impression rocket launchers for maximum DPS. However, if you don't have a lasting impression rocket launcher, a linear fusion rifle with boss spec is also another good option. Sleeper Simulant could also be a great pick next season as it's probably also getting buffed. Anarchy could be great for tick damage over time as the Templar likes to move and teleport around the room quite a lot. That's a bit more of a safer option though. 1k could be great DPS but a little bit more risky because of detainment issues. If you recall in D1 you get detained during Templar and you can blow yourself up. But this goes for rocket launchers as well, a bit more risky. Pair this with a sniper rifle. Okay, so this video is getting quite long now, so I just wanted to conclude with some final mods that I would recommend. Taking charge. Getting charged with light when you pick up an orb. Pretty uh, standard to have in a day one. But pair this with protective light. Uh, you have this extra damage resistance when you're about to die. It's very useful in contest modifier situations. Then obviously your ammo finders, uh, your scavengers, and your loaders relative to the gun you're going to be wearing. All pretty basic stuff. But uh, I hope this guide helps, and yeah, good luck in your day one.